All I ask for is one slate, right? One showdown slate that doesn't end in excruciating pain. Please. I'm begging you. But all right, guys, let's talk about this Thursday showdown slate. We have the million dollars up top. Miami and Cincinnati should be a pretty solid game. If this is your first time watching, welcome to my channel. My name is DK, and I do cover content for DraftKings and for Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the sponsor of today's video. You guys can use the code DKDFS for a 100% match up to $100. For your first time user, take advantage of that code. If you guys are looking for premium content, you can check out my Patreon, also linked in the description below. We did have here, I should probably go to this. Um, we had a uh, Patreon member take down uh, the big showdown slate last night. Uh, so congrats, congrats, Reese, won over $10,000. We had a couple other big winners as well, so love to see that. And yeah, let's uh, let's recap my lineup from last night. So um, I went a bit contrarian. I, I went um, to Sterling Shepard in the captain. Unfortunately, he got it. I mean, he's had like the worst injury luck ever. I really feel bad for the guy because he's talented, but just can't catch a break with these injuries. Um, Saquon and CD both smashed. Um, they were both popular. Daniel Jones, I went to him because I was leaving some salary on the table. And then Richie James and Ferguson routed out my lineup now. I was a little bit surprised how popular Ferguson was as opposed to Hendershot. It was like 38% to like 2%. That didn't make a ton of sense. Um, I thought it was going to be pretty similar ownership, and I was way wrong on that. So um, had I known that going into the slate, the ownership gap was going to be that wide. I would have been all over Hendershot. But um, yeah, that is the recap for Monday night. Again, let's talk about this one. And let's first take a look at these Vegas odds. Uh, we do have some injury news to monitor for both teams as well. Um, we should get more clarity on that probably tomorrow and then obviously heading into game day on Thursday. But it's 47 over under, and the Bengals are currently four-point favorites. We'll start off with Miami. And at the top, we do have the two wide receivers here in Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Now, again, Waddle is one guy I think we had to monitor. He was a non-participant on Monday with a groin. Um, again, we'll keep an eye on the news. As far as ceiling on both these wide receivers, I think they both have a pretty high ceiling. Uh, they're both going to play majority of the game as well. If you take a look at last game, you saw 30. They only played 43 offensive snaps. You saw 37 of the 43 snaps there for Tyreek Hill and 32 of the 43 there for Waddle. So assuming that both play, I think they're, again, pretty similar plays. I, I would say Waddle might have a little bit of a higher floor. Um, and again, both have a very high ceiling. Now, if Waddle ends up missing this game, then obviously that's going to boost the appeal of Tyreek Hill. And then we will, we will have some value to talk about for Miami if Waddle is not able to play. Tua as well. Um, I think he's going to be able to, to play. And Tua's played pretty well this year, all things considered. Um, he got banged up last game, was able to return. Um, not a guy that has really any rushing upside, but 9.4K for a quarterback on a show on slate. I think he makes for a pretty safe play. Again, if he misses, if, he, if he's not able to go, you can consider Teddy Bridgewater uh, would be a downgrade uh, quarterback play, but um, he would still be viable in the showdown. And then you have the two running backs here in Chase Edmonds and Mostert. Um, they've been basically splitting the snaps last couple games. So you saw 19 snaps for Edmonds, 24 for uh, Mostert. And Mostert a little bit cheaper at 4-4. Edmonds is 6-2. So maybe lean uh, Mostert over Chase Edmonds. But they're both fine options. I don't really have a super strong take on either of them. Mike Jacecki's 5K. So... The snaps have been going down on him this year, but he's still uh, getting opportunities. He played 17 of the 43 snaps last game, uh, played on nine passing plays. So, uh, again, this, with the snaps going down on him this year, it does uh, make him probably a little bit overpriced at $5,000. The defenses on a slate where we have a total pushing close to 50, not as excited, but we know defense is a high variance position. You can always consider the defenses in large field tournaments. Kickers, well, um, you saw what happened last night, right? Where both kickers went for double digit fancy points. Very, very rare. Uh, but it's, it, you know, that is the ceiling for kickers, usually, you know, low to mid teens fancy points. So they're always viable options in the show on slate. Durham Smythe is 2.8K. So he's been getting some run as uh, the backup tight end, but he all, he actually played more than Mike Jacecki last game. He played 32 snaps and ran uh, 12, around 12 of those. So, at 2.8K, he might be uh, the tight end that's a bit easier to get to of the Miami wide receivers. And then we got to talk about the secondary wide receivers here, especially if Waddle misses. So taking a look at the snaps last game, you did see Trent uh, Sherfield was the wide receiver three. He played 27 snaps. 
Um, whereas Cedric Wilson only played five. River Craycraft, who got uh, put back down to the practice squad, only played nine. So um, if we do not see Jalen Waddle, again, like I said, it's going to boost Irie Kill. He's going to have a lot more looks. But also, guys like Wilson, if he plays in Sherfield, are going to have uh, a lot more opportunities at cheap price points. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, if Waddle plays, then, again, Sherfield played more than Wilson last game. Um, maybe a slight lean to him, but I think they have, they have Wilson ahead of him in the depth chart. They do. Um, I know Wilson got a little bit banged up last game, too. So um, if Waddle does play, definitely downgrade the sheep wide receivers. And Craycraft, I think he's scored two touchdowns now last couple games, but he's barely been playing. So he's been getting very lucky with touchdown variance. He also again, got put back down to the practice squad. And I think that is it for Miami. So let's move on to Cincinnati. Cincinnati at the top, we have Joe Burrow at 11K, uh, or Jamar Chase at 11K, I should say, Joe Burrow right below him. But yeah, um, Jamar Chase, it looks like T. Higgins is going to play, who's also got kind of unlucky with injuries recently. Um, he was a limited participant uh, on the practice report on Monday. Um, with the discount, you have T. Higgins at 8-2, Chase at 11K. I mean, I slightly prefer T. Higgins for the discount. I think both are very, very talented wide receivers. But if you're going to give me a $3,000 discount, I'm just going to lean T. Higgins. Now, that doesn't mean Jamar Chase is out of play. And we know this guy has a massive, massive ceiling. So I still like Jamar Chase at the top. And could you play both these guys together? Sure. You know, the positive with Cincinnati is they're going to play their main guys basically the entire game, right? So um, T. Higgins had to leave the field for a few snaps last game. We played 46 of the 68 snaps. Jamar Chase played 59. Tyler Boyd, Tyler Boyd played 46 um, you saw nine snaps for Thomas, Mike Thomas, six for Stanley Morgan, and two for Trent Taylor. So the back of wide receivers really didn't see much run at all. Um, so again, I slightly prefer Higgins to Chase, but Chase obviously still in play. Joe, Joe Burrow at 9.6K. I think I slightly prefer him to Tua on this slate if you're going to make me pick between the two quarterbacks. But um, they're both relatively cheap on a showdown slate. Normally we do the, the quarterbacks pushing 10K plus. Both are in the 9K range. Joe Mixon also uh, looks like he'll be good to go. Um, you know, didn't do a ton on the ground last game against the Jets, but was still basically their bell cow back until the end of the game when P. Ryan came in and got some carries. Uh, so Mixon, I think, is a very safe play in both formats. Is involved in the passing game, nine, four, and seven targets through three games. Is going to get a majority of the early down work as well. I think he's very, very safe. And then they did price up P. Ryan just in case Mixon was not able to go, which is, you know, the correct thing to do at drafting's part, but it uh, looks like Mixon's good to go. So P. Ryan completely out of play for me at 7-4. Tyler Boyd, 7K. So he's their slot wide receiver. Um, you know, he's gotten a bit lucky with the touchdowns as well. Two touchdowns through three games. Don't know if that's going to continue. Feels a little bit overpriced, but the positive is he's still going to have a lot of opportunities. I just, when you have T. Higgins at 8-2 and Boyd at 7K, I mean, I'm just going to lean T. Higgins over Boyd uh, at a similar price point. And then scrolling down to the tight end. So Hayden Hurst is 5-4. He also got a bit banged up. Um, but, and this game was a blowout. Um, the, the game against the Jets. So they didn't have to pass a ton in the second half. In the previous game, though, Hurst had played a majority of the game. Last game, he did only play 26 of the 68 snaps. So a little bit concerning. Again, we'll keep an eye on the groin injury. But if we go back to... The first couple games where Hayden Hurst was basically playing the entire game, if we get a you know Hurst playing those amount of snaps for Thursday's game, then that's going to make him a pretty solid value. McPherson, solid kicker, decent value play in the defenses. As I said, higher total game. They're more large field tournament plays, not out of play, but you're probably going to need a defensive score. I'm not really looking at Chris Evans. I don't even know if he plays. Again, Mike Thomas saw a couple snaps. Um, the backup tight end here, so Wilcox, uh, he did play a good amount of the game last game. He played 39 and 68 snaps, ran around 13. And more used for blocking, but it's only $600. And you have Patriots, Patriots legend, Devin Asiasi. Uh, he is the tight end three. He played 24 snaps as well. Um, if we know anything of the showdowns the last year, a little over a year, just locking all the backup uh, tight ends. They're, they're bound to score. But um, no, seriously, uh, you know, we'll keep eye. There's a lot of guys kind of status up in the air. We could have some value if, if a couple of these guys do miss. But if assuming like all these questionable players play, really not much value like below the kickers, right? So um, I always like shit on sites like this where it's a bit tougher to build out a lineup. Uh, but again, monitor the injury news and react accordingly. But that'll wrap it up for the video. Again, if you guys have enjoyed, just make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I appreciate you guys as always, and I'll see you all in the next video.